All right, just before we have a look at our levels and grids here in our Revit structural project, we always want to have a look at our settings up inside of here under structure, just like systems and everything else. We want to have a, a look at the settings inside of here, um, symbolic representation. So some symbology uh, stuff that's going on in here and sizing of cutback distances and graphics versus um, kind of double line stuff. So you can have um, Revit represent your structural stuff in single line or, you know, which most of it is really done in single line for plans and elevations. Um, the detail level comes in when you get into your um, your details and callouts and stuff. But um, most of it is single line. So there's some settings in, inside here for that. Some load cases that you can create here. Okay, and you can add more and load nature. So you've got your natures and your load cases over here and descriptions. And then you can use those in your load combinations by adding in load combinations and then taking those and factoring them and bringing them into here and applying that to your analytical stuff inside of here and tolerances on how you know far things can go away before they you know technically are too far away and the analytical model doesn't um, connect properly so there's some analytical settings boundary conditions over here we're all familiar with and just some different symbology so some of this is symbology some of it is numerical so always have a look in our structural settings and that should really be saved in your template file. Um, we loaded up some of the families we anticipate using. I always, before I create my grid lines, I like to have a look at one of my elevations here, south elevation, okay? Note the discipline of the view. Remember that in a structural discipline, um, Non-load bearing walls do not show up and that'll get people a lot. They forget that if they draw an architectural wall, they can't see it and they can't figure out why it's because you're in a structural discipline view and you drew or you're trying to look at an architectural wall. If it's non-load bearing, then um, you cannot um, see it in if the view is set to be structural. So we have two levels. I want to add um, two more levels. We want to have a top of footing, level one, level two, and a roof. Okay, this is going to represent the steel. So let's um, let's go to structure and datums, and we will create a uh, level over here, level. And I'm just going to click on there, and I want that to be, you know, about 1,500 below there, and I want this to be, you know, about 4,200 above there escape escape I'm just going to use my um, align dimension tool if you don't have that you can go on here and right click on it and say add to quick access toolbar okay then you can do that so it's just sometimes easier to control these if you put a dimension in there so dimension and then place not click nothing okay when you do dimensions you can pick the same point more than once if you click it again you'll remove it when you're done, pick nothing, and then it's there. Escape, escape. Click on here, delete that guy. So level one is staying there. I'm going to rename it. This is going to be 1500, which is about five feet. So click down there. I'm going to pick on this level and then pick on this blue number and say you are 4200. Click out. And then I'm going to pick on here and click on here and make this also 4200 and then click out. Now I want my dimensions to show metric and imperial. So I'm going to pick on this dimension, hit edit type. I'm going to go down here and turn on alternative units and say show me alternative units below and make those be feet and inches. And that's good. Suppress zero feet, hit OK. And I also want to tighten up the text. So the text offset, I'm going to go point point one make it a little tighter so that's for my imperial friends now i'm going to go back on here that was a little bit too tight let's hit edit type let's go back to that offset text offset let's make it point two five 
And I'm also going to make it narrow, make it smaller with factor 0.7. Makes it kind of skinny. There we go. So just so my imperial friends can see what those distances are as we move along. Okay, so there's my levels. Now I'm going to go make some grid lines. So I'm going to go back to my structural level one. Set up for structural. I'm going to draw some grid lines. I'm going to go to my structural tab and draw a grid line. And I'm going to have three grid lines going this way. Okay, zoom in. You can see that's grid line one. And I want this to be about, eh, about 13, 14 meters away. So I'm going to go up over here, nice and straight. Use your shift key if you want to keep it straight. 13 meters and click. Now I'm going to go this way. And as I do, I'm going to stop and click right in the middle there and make this an A and hit enter. Now my next one here is going to be a B automatically. And this is going to be a C. Notice how I got those all nice and square and lined up. Escape, escape, zoom out. Now I'm going to pick on this grid line, pull it down. I'm going to grab all the grid lines with my crossing box and kind of kind of center that inside my elevations. Now I'm going to throw some dimensions on there. Overall, okay, like that. The size of the dimensions will depend on the scale factor, okay, as it should. Click on there, place it, click, click. Click and place it. Oh, got it in the wrong place. Click, nudge, nudge, nudge with the keyboard. Nudge with the keyboard. Okay. And looks like I might pull these guys out a little bit and pull these guys in a little bit. Okay. So that's going to show up on my level one. It's also going to show up on my level two. And it's also going to show up on my level three and my level four. Because I create the, the levels before the grid lines. Now, what I need to do um, is to come back and have a look at the elevations, okay? Because the elevations by default aren't going to see far enough to see these two outside grid lines. All of them need to be probably stretched out a bit. So uh, let's do a save. We've got our levels set up, okay, over here, but our grid lines, oh, they're not, they're almost in there. Uh, we'll do some cleanup. So there's our level lines with some dimensions, and there's our grid lines with dimensions ready to roll.